Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Faces of Art. Today in studio to kona poeta mwenyewe. Kabisa the king, king, king. Poeta, one time rapper, some all time poet, eh? full time wordsmith, event planner, podcaster. Generally we can say you're just a multidimensional artist. Mm -hmm. Any your umbrella art so that many could do because vitu ziko chini ya umbrella ni mingi sana like what so unapata mimi na kwa guy like i'm always an experimental person mm -hmm. so there was a time i was in ha i was even having an identity crisis because i couldn't know if i wanted to do everything in art or i just wanted to concentrate on a certain particular art because there was a point i can dance i could rap i could okay singing is the only thing i could not do i could draw I mm -hmm. could paint, um, let's say all the categories of art, but nowadays I try to kind of narrow down everything to a certain point because in life you can't be there for everyone, you can't be there everywhere, so you have to be somewhere. And that somewhere now is the poetry, the podcast, and the event plan. So basically what you're doing is that you're trying to set up uh, a base, something people will know you first for. But does that mean that you've like put aside everything else? Because I assume it's been a while yeah. since you were rapping or yeah. painting. Mm. So everything else you've put aside. Is it permanent or temporary? Well, I started off as a as a choral verse person that was in primary and then high school. And then when I went to the higher state of high school now, that's from three and from four, is when I started beginning to kind of rap. And then you see now I'm doing poetry. I'm doing podcast. I'm an event planner. These were things that were never planned, but they came. So I cannot say I'm doing the others, mm -hmm. maybe like um, not permanently, because I know they'll come up. Yeah. I'm a person who is always evolving. I was a poet, now I'm taking my poetry to another level, which is podcasting. And then you see when podcast keeps growing, I will try to fuse it with another experimental art. So basically I'm an experimental artist. I cannot box myself to one kind of thing because God gave me multiple talents. It's not like trying out. So I really want to explore God's um, ability in me. Yeah. I've seen this like... Um if, if I could mention, there's like a, a pattern. So you said choral verse, then um, poetry. Then, then rap, then poetry. Rap, rap yes. was in form three. It yeah. kind of makes sense, because mm. at, at teenage, that's when you're most resistant. <laughs> yeah. As in you want to like yeah. break things. So yeah. rap, it makes sense. It really makes sense. And uh, then you went to poetry, as mm. in with, uh, it's, it's like, uh, like almost uh, like, it's almost like an evolution, like a development mm -hmm. you are going through. But it's the same thing. It's but the it's, same it's, thing. It's words. It's just words, words, words. Words which actually now are climbing the ladder. And you see, even there is a book in primary school that was about climbing the ladder. So from, from class one to class primary, eight, mathira, primary, yeah, primary mathematics. Primary mathematics, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the two kids who are climbing the ladder. <laughs> so it's, it's also like um, words because it starts with um, memory verse. Actually, it starts with memory verse. Mm -hmm. Memory verse. And then it goes to the choral verses. Now this is primary and high school. And then it goes to poems. Mm. And then now in the outside world where you're not performing for um, academics competition, mm. now you know it's a free world. Yeah. So it goes from poetry now to spoken word. Because now spoken word is free. You are reciting it in a very free mode. It's not about poems that you need to say dada, chada, mada. Spoken word is free about your thoughts wandering around so like basically when when you're in primary school and in high school everything is super structured mm -hmm. but when it's it's on the outside it's it's wild west it's wild west because these are now your thoughts and your performance it's not just a matter of words you trying to relay words to the other person who's in the house listening mm -hmm. it's about now performance and words. So you see, you cannot perform. Words as in message. I'm a, I'm a the just... words grow to sentences, uh -huh. which grows to stanzas, and yeah. stanzas now make sense. Yeah. Now that's spoken word. 
now when it comes to spoken word you still have the words the stanzas and the the sentences mm -hmm. but now it's more of having a lot of freedom where you can speak the way you want you can um raise your voice or lower your voice the way you want it's not a matter mm -hmm. of structures the way poems are that uh, a spoken word has to have like six stanzas or what yeah, spoken word is just your, your mind uh -huh. even if you don't want to stop you can speak the whole time but yeah you, you, at a spoken word has to have six the 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 poems are the ones having like stanzas so the the like, ones we yeah in high school earlier in high school they in were high very school, structured yeah, they were more structured so people are being awarded points based on how many rules they follow yes and also the delivery delivery like delivery. You, your, your your connection with the audience now your stage presence yeah. like how are you delivering your words your words can be powerful but the way they're being delivered is weak in a, in a, in yeah. a, in a dull way probably it's in a dull way and then mm. it's not communicating its purpose and now mm. you see that's why people really kind of at some point hated spoken word or poetry before they knew what it was because they were actually associating the with the poetry that he used to do in high school. Ah. That was for academics. Yeah. So it was hard, you know, you could be quoting Merchant of Venice, her Shakespeare's, mm. you know, stanzas in and like, what the hell do these things mean? And then now when you tell us a uh, person you're a poet, mm. they kind of think, I the ones we used to do in high school, ah, that's a boring stuff. But spoken word is beautiful. Poetry is beautiful, actually, when you understand it. Yeah. And when you're in the, in the mood to feel it. Because poems are read, and then they give you a certain feeling. Yeah. So that's the beauty of poetry. So, like, there is a point where, like, now the audience is warming up towards spoken word more than Kitambo. You mm -hmm. were, have you noticed that, Amo? Yes, I noticed that because nowadays we get uh, poets or even spoken word artists to perform in in clubs, mm -hmm. you know, in government functions and also in these other art genres. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of spoken word artists who have performed at Churchill show. Mm -hmm. But Kitambo, you could just perform in a poetry event. Yeah. But nowadays, it's a collaboration of artists and, and, and avenues. So... Spoken word has grown. To see a spoken word performing after a comedian or even mm. before a comedian, to me that's growth. Because Kitambo, it was about um, if you're a poet, during lunch breaks or cocktail breaks, that's when you're performing. If it's club, perform whether no one is listening or anything. You just perform. But nowadays, at least you're given that respect in terms of a spoken word artist can perform even after a big Kenyan artist. So to me, that's growth. It's growth. Yeah. It is, it is. And since I think I think in a way you also see yourself as a very unique uh, performer in the spoken mm -hmm. word um, like let's say universe. Yeah. Yeah. Cause coming from if 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 a lot of the audience at some point still thinks that it's still the same structured way of poetry in primary and high school probably there are also some artists who still like operate in that structure yes mm. yeah but you don't seem to be one of them mm. as in what what makes your style unique compared to everybody else my style is i was just telling my girlfriend my style is spontaneous mm. i'm not a person who at times will really plan 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 a lot and then go deliver Mm -hmm. I can get on stage and depending on the crowd's mood, I come up with a very out of out of the dome concept. You know, I just feel like ah this crowd, the way I'm feeling it, you know, they'll resonate with a certain point of uh you know, certain kind of performance. Yeah. And then I I just develop something on stage. On the spot. Spontaneous, and it becomes amazing because now you are experimenting, and there's nothing good like experimenting, and you're experimenting from a point of having a lot of confidence. It's not that will this work or it, it will not work. So, um, like, let, let me give an example. The other day I was in class, and I wanted to talk uh, about a certain topic, and then I was like, the way I'll deliver this topic, it will not work. Let me start with a lower performance. And then it gets the crowd confused, and then they're now more eager to even listen to what I wanted to, to say. So that's how I do, man. 
So on this, I think I think it's like the two things come to mind. You, you said you are in high school. You used to rap, and uh, we had Sogalo here uh, previously. Yeah. And during the podcast, mm. when we introduced him, he rapped mm. for the like, first time. <laughs> him and his his, his, his friend. Uh, man. And, and, uh-huh. and and I asked him about it. I asked him like. As in, had you rehearsed that? Mm. Uh, and then he said, it just came to me. And yeah. then you mentioned that you're not afraid, as in, to take that risk. Mm. And the way it will go, it will go. As yes. in, you've just, ch- you've just picked a spot and you're mm. going with it. For sure. So Galo mentioned the same thing. As mm. in, he said, he doesn't actually know where he's going, yeah. but he's willing to actually go there and see sure. what words come up mm. as he's as he's moving along, mm. you, you just find it fascinating that your thought process is the same for two different people mm. who haven't worked together. Mm. And I always find it that those kind of artists, they is it true? It looks like you're really enjoying yourself mm, yeah. doing that thing. Cindy, it's about enjoying your craft, being your own fan. That's the word, being your own fan. Mm. And you become your own fan. You can even set your own event in your own bedroom and perform for yourself. And you know, pay ticket. <laughs> <laughs> pay ticket to come to your own event that you're performing in and the only person. So that's mm. how we enjoy our craft. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of it's people not, don't... It's not bragging if it's true. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't listen to even their craft. They're like, let me perform for the people. Mm. But you see, for me at times, even, even my album, mm. I just put it on play and just listen to it, listen to it. And I'm like, damn, I'm dope, I'm dope. And it comes out cocky, but... I'm dope. That's who I am. So when I listen to myself and I'm like, man, did I even create this stuff? Mm. And you see, the, what made me realize that I'm a dope artist is because the album that I launched in 2018, mm. I wrote it in 2015. And you see, the way the way, the way the creation process is, I can write something now and within a month, you cannot even... If a new person comes they'll not know what you talked about. Let's say maybe because I talked about Moringa Studios and Moringa Studios next month, mm. it won't be there. Mm. But I was traveling to the past when I was writing this, um, my, my, my album. I was traveling this is to a the past. Mu- music album. Yes, a, yeah. a spoken word album. Mm. I was traveling okay, to I'm the confused. past. I'm confused, I'm confused. Spoken word just like shapes into music at some point. You put like some, you, you yes. work with producers and and mm. and uh, turn it into into music tracks music is poetry yeah because when you now get the melody out of it and you get the the instrumental out of it it's mm. just written words okay which is poetry so music is poetry so when you say spoken word it's just another genre that came out of the bigger umbrella so music is so even if I say spoken word music, my album is spoken word music. Yeah. It's um spoken <coughs> word that is also filled with certain interludes of singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're mentioning something also about uh like <laughs> buying your own ticket. Mm. As in so this is like a ritual for you, as in you listen to your own tracks and you become your own fan. And you set your own event and go to your own event that you're the only one performing. So you buy your own ticket and pay actually it's like um buying your art investing in your art that's the word investing in your art so the way you picture yourself at that moment where you are your own fan mm-hmm. now when it comes to a point where you are commanding a crowd of 60,000 people you are like i was my own fan and that's why you can now be able to command a crowd of 100,000 people they were seeing queen on, on the youtube oh, and then any uh, yeah. what you're mentioning is uh, Queen's performance. In, the Queen's performance in, in really, 1986. That was 1986. Wembley, Wembley Stadium. And the way you see him performing, you mm. just see this is a person who performs a lot in front of the mirror and actually appreciate what he does. So when he gets on stage, he's like... He's having I'm a good sorry. time. He's I'm a, so confident <laughs> in myself that, man, it will just reflect on you guys. And I, then I, you I, don't, the I, I don't think even it's confidence crazy. Confidence actually mm. tries to... Confidence always feels like the way it's described as mm. if it's it's something you're adding on <laughs> that I have built uh-huh. up mm. like fuel. Yeah. As in, I have so much of this fuel mm. that I can control this audience and I, 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 can, I, can, I can make a good show. Mm-hmm. But what you're describing is something completely the opposite. Uh-huh. As in, you've been having so much fun 
yeah. as your own audience. As your it's own overflowing audience. out mm. of you. It's not fuel coming in. Exactly. It's something you're taking out. And sharing, As yeah. in, I have too much of it. Mm. So, even if there's anybody around to, mm. to mm. soak up all this, mm. all this fun that I'm having, mm. even on my own, yeah. I'm having this much fun. True? True. In other words, it's called abundance. You know, when you have abundance, you share, you share, you share, and you still, it's still something that is in you. So it's like you're sharing and it's multiplying. The more you share, the more it multipli uh, multiplies. And that's now, you know, what you're talking about that Queen was doing. He's sharing. And he, it's full of abundance because he has worked for it for a long time mm -hmm. and loved his thing for a long time. That's now it's just good to share because that's the beauty of art. The more you keep it to yourself, the more it doesn't, it doesn't appreciate Art is something that should be appreciating. So the more you're sharing, the more you're gaining. The more you're sharing, the more you're learning. From the feedback that the fans are giving you, you're learning something new. This is what people want. And then more abundance just come for you to produce, produce, produce. So when we produce, we share, and more come. So that's how I was telling you. That's how God has made me come from being a memory verse narrator mm to now a spoken word artist. It's been growth of a full of abundance. Mm. So yeah. As in as in what I can say is that what I can say is that I'm actually learning something here. Cause 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 I also feel like we okay with a lot of my work there's this stuff I wrote in 2015, and I only started working on it almost uh, 2018, and I released it 2019. And you look back, and you look at since 2019 till now, we you kind of still use that work of kind of some reference mm. to what you're going to do in the future. Mm. But sometimes I think artists, we including myself, we make a mistake of some. What you've just said, we don't share what mm. we are doing. Mm. So is it like is it the first step of sharing your work, almost like sharing it with yourself, as mm. in you enjoying it? That's mm. what you're trying to say. Mm. Because when you're confident about your work, then you share it. If you're not confident, you don't share it. Or there's also another uh, perspective to why you're not sharing it's because you're feeling it's not the right time for that art to be shared. Like you can make a dope piece and then you're like, this is not the right time to share it because its value will still not be appreciated in the way you feel you've worked on it. So those are the two things. You're fearing mm -hmm. it's not the right time mm -hmm. or you not being confident in your work. It's, it's common for people to be confident in their work and what they're producing but still mess up on the idea of like timing. They, 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 so the best time to release it is just immediately it's done. Because I, cause I, actually there's a quote I read on, on a business card from, from she's a lady who works in an advertising company. It was written, mm, it was written uh, a quote by uh, Leonardo da Vinci that art is never finished. It's only abandoned. Mm. At some point, you just say, "Ah, okay, I'm done." As in, mm. let's just release this thing. Is there is there almost a similar experience with what you're doing? Do you actually ever get to the point that you feel, "Okay, I've done the best that could possibly be done with this." I'm a bad guy, or, or later you also always keep your uh, tell yourself, mm. "I want to pull it back into the mm. into the warehouse, see what I can do." Is that a common occurrence? Mm. I love that quote because it's true. If you look at this art, like this painting that you have in the room, right now when I look at it from an observer's perspective, I'm like, wow, you know, this is a dope art. It's, it's finished. I want to buy it. But now with an artist, they'll come and look at it and still feel like it's not enough. There's something I need to do. There's something I need to add and all that. So even with art, that's what happens. It is never finished mm -hmm. because art can be recreated. Yeah. That's why I can go back to 1998 and take somebody's song. Let's say Isa, take his song, bring it here to 2022 mm -hmm. and work on it in a very different way. Now that music fusing with my poetry mm -hmm. and then it becomes a new piece of art. So that's why I think art is never finished. Because if you say finished, then it's something that can never be touched. But so it, it, so it's, it's not just an individual 
job. It's like we are in this together, kind of. So I've done my part for, let's say, this generation. And there's somebody in the future who's going to come up and take it and add their own style to it in a sense that it's not even, it's not just mm. in your life. Mm. It's, it's a perpetual thing. It mm. can continue on and on. That's what you're saying. Exactly. And I, I, want, I can want to bracket it with one word, repurposing. Repurposing. Nowadays, I, I tend not to say recycling so much, mm -hmm. and it's about repurposing, because mm -hmm. recycling has been used to, this has to go to a factory, and then nini, 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 and then it comes out. But now when you see when you're being repurposed, mm -hmm. it's like um, this table. Mm -hmm. Maybe it stays for like years, and then it wears out, mm -hmm. and then I go do some graffiti on it, mm -hmm. and then it becomes new, new thing, but it's still the same thing, but I just repurpose it. It had a purpose, served its purpose, and then it was abandoned. I come and repurpose it to still serve the same purpose, mm -hmm. but now in a new dimension. And it's the same way with creation. You know, God was an artist. God is still an artist. God created the universe. Mm -hmm. He created Adam and Eve. So if you say God's uh, creation was full, then why did he say go and fill the world, go and multiply the world? So Adam and Eve were creations of God in a certain universe or the world that they were in. So after but did, that... But it doesn't stop there. It didn't stop. Yeah. Adam, at the end, uh, you know, he gave birth. Mm -hmm. Gave birth to a son. A son gave... So it's always... So that's also with art. When you say art is complete, someone will always come and pick it up and try to. But now the crazy thing with art, it, it has to be accessible for it to also be recreated. It accessible be in accessible. terms of people can reach to it and use if it. You, if, you, if you can't reach it, mm. you don't know of its existence. Yeah. So how will you? So you must either access it by going to it or accessing it by the artist displaying it out there. Mm. That's why you're talking about sharing. When you don't share your art or you don't share your wisdom, mm. then you're just a foolish person, full of knowledge. It's like an knee. It's like, uh, you know how swamps are formed? Mm. Swamps, swamps and uh, dead lakes like the Magadi, mm. they only have inlets. They don't have outlets. Ah. That's why they become, <laughs> they start to stink and they start yes. to sog up and so everything dies. It's just there. Just there. Things go in, mm. but nothing comes out. Nothing is Not, coming no, out. Nothing comes out. So, <laughs> Like, but you see, like, Lake Victoria is a freshwater lake. Mm. It's actually, is, is it the second largest or the largest freshwater lake on the planet? I, I don't mm. want to lie. I don't know. It's kind of ranking. Lake Victoria is Check. huge. Number three. It's number three. Number three is you are counting. Freshwater lakes. Freshwater, freshwater lakes. lakes. Number two. Ah. Lake number three. But now with the higher sea. So it's a area. big one because I think that's why it's called the Great Lakes region. Because mm. Kunanini. Trukana, mm. Victoria, Tanganyika, and Tanganyika and something else. So <laughs> we digress. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's 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 refreshing. That's that's the word. Mm. It's refreshing to mm. know that you don't have to keep it so much to yourself. Like okay, you said the pro the reason why they keep it so much to themselves is confidence and uh, yeah and uh, and. So it's the, the scarcity timing, and timing. And timing. So it's mm. scarcity. Yeah. So artists have a like, uh, most of them, or a portion of them have a scarcity men mentality in some sort. I'm thinking everyone, not even artists, because mm. um, when, you, when you feel less confident in yourself, it means either it's fear mm -hmm. or inferiority. Okay. So everyone will always have that. So artists are also like that because for us, we are competitive in nature. That's the first thing. We are competitive in nature. Mm -hmm. So when I, you know, I'm listening to Sumi's poetry and she's like so dope. And then I thought mine was so dope. Mm -hmm. Now I listen to her a lot and I'm like, eh, I need not to release this, you know, piece of work right so now. So comparison. <laughs> so I've already compared mm -hmm. and then because in my mind, this was about competition. So when I compare, mm. I listen to my competitor more. Mm -hmm. And then it messes up my brain, and then I start, I start developing fear, and then inferiority. Now I'm like not having self-confidence, and then that's how I'm like, eh. Then this art, mm. let me release it another time mm. or another place. Yeah. Because I've started comparing, and then I feel like hers is better than mine. 
So oh. that's also what artists do. We are even new in the game and you still want to compare. We want to compete and we are still even new in the game where nobody knows you, nobody cares about you. But you are like, hey, the other artist. So that's something that has really messed a lot of artists where you came to an event where you don't know anyone. Mm. But the moment you hear another artist's work, you start mm. comparing. You're like, eh, now will I be better or will I be worse? And yeah, you're all in like a mm. elementary level, mm. as in, but, but a competitive nature has already been set in instead of like, so it's kind of you're, you're saying, you're encouraging more like an educational kind of uh, approach mm. or a cooperative kind of approach mm. to new coming artists. That's what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. And even when we evolve, you know, when we evolve even in terms of our performance, I've mm. been performing for the last, I think, 11 years. Mm. And the first time I went on stage, it was an audition mm -hmm. and my mentor, was there as an adjudicator. Mm. And I was so confident in myself that I knew mm. I was going to, you know, ace mm. the audition. Mm. And when I reached the, when I arrived at the stage mm. and I saw my mentor, mm. I panicked. Because I was like, what if I don't do good and the mm. other people who are competing against me mm. actually outdo me and yet this is my mentor. How mm. will it go? So, you know, I started developing panic attacks in India and then it shut us down. So that's what I'm saying even about art. For art, we should not compare because each and every person has a different thought. It may be the same thing we are doing, but you have different thoughts. That's why you can talk about that girl in a certain way and I can come and talk about that girl in a very different way. Mm -hmm. But it's still the same girl. But our thoughts were, were different. Yeah. And that's what makes us human. We are different in our thoughts. But when you start comparing... That's why people who are called artists who are performing or even producing last year are not this year because they just like, you know, faded off because, because they can now compete with the people who are in right now. They are any, they, it's like this thing that, uh, I think it was 50 Cent who said mm. it, 50 Cent. Uh, he, he said something close to, I'll have to paraphrase him, that he knew he wasn't the best rapper, mm. but, and anybody could probably beat him at rapping, but nobody could beat him at being 50 cent. <laughs> yeah. which, which I really loved that, because it's so true, as in, mm. the, there were competitions of people, like there were, Kitambo, there were, there were competitions of like, uh, I've seen some, I'm not sure if it's true, but mm. it could be, mm. competitions for Charlie Chaplin look alike mm. mm. competitions. Mm. And there were people who were going to those competitions who looked extremely like Charlie mm. Chaplin. Once they got the costume on, mm. and they, and it was a big, and it was a big show. It was mm. funny. But no matter how much you look like Charlie Chaplin, you the have. best you can be is number two. <laughs> a duplicate. A duplicate. <laughs> so it's, it's almost as if you went in front of your, your, your mentor. Mm. He had been teaching you. Mm. Now, instead of just going there and and doing you, mm. you started like almost evaluating yourself mm. based on what they had taught you. Mm. Probably, okay, what if I don't do exactly mm. what he had taught me? As mm. you now, you're, you're already comparing mm. yourself. It, it's not just here, it's everywhere. It's, it's every everywhere. single artist. It's everywhere. It and that's why, even in interviews, you really, really rehearse for an interview. And then when you get to the interview room, you're being asked a question and you can never even think, you can never even remember what you practice. <laughs> Every time, and you're like, bro, but yesterday you were so confident. Mm -hmm. It's because we arrive at the place and then we just shut off our confidence. And then we now start thinking with the other person's uh, perspective. Will they like me? Will they not? Will they, will they, what will they say? And that's how we even not produce songs that are timeless because um, we're like, this song is timeless, yeah. But what if they don't like it because either I'm too deep or, you know, I am too passionate about a certain topic and not the topic that everyone is talking about. So whenever we write, we produce, now we are going to share, we start those uh, bringing in fear all the time, all the time. And then it makes other artists disappear. 
-hmm. because now when you fear and other people are sharing their work, you become extinct. You're because, always comparing yeah. yourself to, to what So no, nobody ever doing. knows. They just know you're an artist. And then it will reach mm -hmm. at a certain point where they'll not even recognize you mm -hmm. as an artist because artists, we are used to performing, we're used to sharing. So if you're not sharing our work, mm -hmm. then it means no one knows about us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and the, other, the, the, the weird thing about... Um, I was told this story about Picasso, about he used to draw like uh, perfect realism or, or something. As in, he, that was his style that when he was painting. And then the camera became popular. And then he knew, like, no, who's going to compete mm. with that? So he came up with a new style. Because the, the weird thing about art is that it's, it's, it's greatly determined by the person who's doing it. Mm. It's not like engineering. Engineering, gravity works in that direction, mm. and that's the direction it's going to work. Mm. All right? When you're building a bridge, you have to put it into consideration. You don't come there with your own form of expression in engineering. There are some rules you have to follow. Mm. Yeah, there are rules in, in, in art, but those rules don't seem to be within stone walls. Mm. They always seem as if, as if the fence is movable mm. or even removable. Mm. So... When you start comparing yourself to other people, mm. it's like now you are building a wall around art and mm. it becomes inorganic. Mm -hmm. Is that something like what you're trying to describe? Yes. When you, when you compare yourself with other artists, then it also means you are limiting your freedom or you're putting a fence to your freedom in terms of thought. And then you're, it's like also insulting yourself because you're telling yourself that there are two of me, there are three of me, there are hundreds of me out there, so there can never be none of me out there. Mm. So when you do that, then also your art depreciates because now you can want to start doing what the other person is doing or what the world is doing all the other time. So you're not creating, you're, not you're just creating. recreating. Mm. Somebody does, you recreate. Somebody does, you recreate. Mm. The way, and that's, that's, that's how, why the, you know, TikTok became a, a number one kind of you social, know, social platform, yeah. Mm. Because it's about you can create somebody else's work. You can always recreate. So you're always number two. But now with TikTok, the good thing is they're number one in terms of sales because they're recreating other people's material and which yeah. is working. But it's about just doing it in a very fun way, not mm -hmm. actually taking a person's art and doing it you know, better. So it's almost like the way you are say, talking about sampling. As in, it's like TikTok of Nini. Have, have democratized mm. sampling. They, mm. They've decentralized it. Mm. As in, it's something that was very common for, for especially for hip-hop. Hip-hop, yes. I think, it, it did, an, it mm. did a very big leap. Yeah, in terms of marketing, mm. popularity. What, what's the name of that song? Ten, 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 Ice, Ice Baby. Ah. Because that, that track was sampled, like, so blatantly mm. from the original one but mm. uh, <laughs> it's still it's still up for debate till mm. today mm. yeah but but tiktok people are really enjoying themselves and they are putting like their own kind of mm. uh, expression to something mm. isn't it the almost similar to what you had mentioned earlier about how how somebody made something in the 90s and mm. then a following generation kind mm. of improves on it. Is mm. it. Isn't it something similar? Yes, exactly. Because if I take a Lingala song that was sung in 1985 and then I come and fuse it with my spoken word of music, then people travel back to that art to go listen to it and then come and listen to this kind of art right now, and then you appreciate the power of evolution. We are certain art that really can't make sense, the original can't make sense right now, mm. but it can be recreated, repurposed into making sense right now by just adding a few stuff in terms of recreation. You put here and here, and then it works. So, so that's the beauty of art. It always repurposes um, yeah. what they thought was dead. So that's why when you look at walls, dull walls, graffiti artists come in, mm. you know, paint on it. And then it becomes another beautiful thing. So also with art, that's what it does. The, the thing you've said that it gives access 
to people who are not listening to the track that's from like say let's say 1938 mm. now you've made people interested in the, mm. in the original one mm. actually something similar happens to me when i'm when i'm when i'm watching movies mm. like kuna chiki kuna shawn of the dead mm. ile zombies which is comedy alafu mm. kuna dawn of the dead mm. uh, 2005 mm-hmm. But Dawn of the Dead was actually a remake of a movie that happened in 78 called Dawn of the Dead. The, the mm. actual same name. Ah. So you find yourself going back <laughs> hey. to to see what inspired this mm. new filmmaker mm. to recreate this mm. this movie. Yeah. How, funny how good was it back mm. in the day. Mm. So so <laughs> kind of TikTok has made that available to mm. almost anybody on mm. a, on a very on a very small scale. Mm. Of course there are people who are going to hate about it and mm. what not. Yeah. But uh, like uh, the Naziad fiasco when mm. she she made the TikTok mm. video and there was all this talk on social media mm. about her being paid and what not. Mm. Mm. I think in a way we are kind of looking at it at the wrong in the wrong way. Have you ever heard of something called growth hacking? Growth hacking. Yeah. Not really. Growth hacking is a is a is a nini is a Okay, historically, it's a marketing tactic that was mm. developed by engineers, specifically okay. software engineers. Mm. Unajua, marketing from the start has always been, okay, billboards, print, mm. TV, mm. buying ads here. Mm. Now, these engineers didn't know that. Mm. They were trying to figure out how we, how we going to make Gmail, something like Gmail, go viral. Mm. So, what they would do, they would send an email, and then Palatini, at the bottom, there's probably like a message sent from my Gmail. Would you like one? Mm. So with every email that's sent is an ad. Mm. So the marketing is inside the product. It mm. moves. That's why you never see a billboard for Gmail or mm. for Facebook. Yeah. You never see, an, but you have one. Mm. So growth hacking works for, for almost anything because TikTok... TikTok has a, has a, has a really very big potential of doing that for you. Mm. For instance, a very good, I think, growth hacking, but this, this was pegged on her, on her, nini, on her own brilliance. This, this, remind me her name, the, the British musician, this big Adele. British, Adele. Mm. Adele is a track she made and people were making, uh, what, they, what are they called? Mm, like Pardon. recreations of the song. Oh, yeah. Uh, hello. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see, that's marketing for you. Mm. Everybody knows the original one is from Adele, but with mm. every track anybody out there makes with Hello, sells Hello, mm. makes people aware of mm. Hello. You mm. start asking yourself, why is everybody singing this song? Why is everybody mm. singing this song? So mm. it's almost what you're talking about. Yet. With your spoken word, mm-hmm. in terms of Vitukama, what are ideal collaborations for you? For in a spoken word, what's an ideal collaboration? Um, an ideal collaboration is how do I put it? <laughs> I think I would want to collaborate with like anyone. So coming up with an ideal collaboration can be hard, but what, for what me it's a matter of does our art marry? So you. You still make those decisions on the spot. Are there any kind of like projects you have in mind that a collaboration mm. would be mm. ideal? Uh, yeah. For for this time, mm. like for instance. For this time, for this time, it's a uh, yeah, spoken word and dance, mm-hmm. spoken word and ac- acrobatism. There's mm-hmm. a word like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoken word and an instrumentalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I normally prefer the djembe artist, the djembe and the mm. trampoline. Um, Spoken word can can go with um, beatboxing. Yeah. Yeah. Also beatboxing. That's another collaboration I'm really looking forward to. And then the the collaboration that I'm really really eh, eh, really 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 looking forward mm. to is between spoken word and rock. Oh man, man. Rock. Rock music, mm. bro. It's fire. It's fire. I'm telling you, I'm burning on the stage <laughs> and a rock artist also with me. It's just fire, man. It's crazy. Yeah. That's the uh, I don't know where I'll get a rock artist in Kenya, mm. but that's something I'm really looking forward to. There was a rock group called the Parking Lot Grass. I don't know where those guys went. Parking Lot Grass. Yeah. Mm. But now I know a collab that I want to do. I don't know if it's exclusive or I should just shout it out right mm. here. But I'm looking forward to a Poeta and Mankind collaboration.
Mankind. I don't know if you know man. Man. Mm. Mankind is crazy. It's crazy. They do like alternate pop somewhere if I if, if I can guess here. Yeah. Mm. But in terms of now rock me uh that can be a very good collab. Actually I'm really manifesting. Mankind to put a laser to your artist. Mankind. It's a duo. It's a duo, yeah. It's a duo, they do what? It's a duo. I, the songs they do, it's um, the alternate pop. It's more of like, okay, you ski as a Kenyan, it's mm. like, are these people international? And they just came from here. Yeah. Yeah. They sing, hey, their melodies, even the instrumental, the way they, and then they're poetic. That's why I love them. Wow. They're really, really poetic. Mm. So that collaboration. Where can uh, we find it? They are online. Most of them are online. On YouTube as well. Yeah, on Instagram, I think they call themselves the life of mankind. I don't know if... The life of mankind. Mm. But just mm. search mankind KE or mankind Kenya. Yeah, and them. then listen to the first song. It's called North. North. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> My friend. You change your goddamn playlist. Right? <laughs> just like that. Hey, it's crazy. So yeah, those are the collaboration I'm looking forward to. Because as I told you, um, I'm a person who loves timeless music. Whether it's music, or poetry, or art, mm. any creation, I love it timeless. That's why I was talking about my Shuja album being written in 2016 and still in 2022. You can listen to it and be like, you're really in that moment. Because I didn't use metaphors that were maybe um, alcohols that people used to drink at that time. I mean, mm. It's what you can resonate right now. When I talk about Gideri, Gideri is still here right now. Mm -hmm. So I normally travel to the past, remain in the present, and then go to the future. That's how I, I write my, my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. An impressive sound. The the collaborations you've mentioned were that strike you the it's for mankind and for, for rock music. Mm. Of which of which the direction we are heading, Sasa in Azakuka, it's actually looking pretty interesting. Because mm. if you think about where we've come from, mm. we've come from uh, what was it? As in from primary school, mm. Umetoka from the memory uh, verse. The memory verse. I love and, uh, and the choral verse. Oh. And then, ah, ni mekumbuke yengine? Narration. <laughs> Narration. <laughs> Imagine I was to be casted as an actor, and mm -hmm. then I was given the part of a narrator, be a narrator. And I was, you know, right now when I sit here and it makes sense, like these people, they were seeing mm -hmm. the power of talking and expressing yourself more than the acting part. I was mm -hmm. an actor, yes, but that narration, so energy and all the vibrations were starting from way back. Mm. You know, you will be a poet. You will be somebody who just talks about words mm. and sentences that you have really worked hard on the word play and it will make sense. So, so choral verse, memory verse, narration, rapping, poems, and spoken word now. Mm. So it's been a journey. <laughs> does, 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 does this comedian, <laughs> does this comedian I, was, I was talking to once, Akaniambia, at he, sometimes being a comedian, since your job is like talking in front of an audience, mm. sometimes your brainstorming sessions, you do them on, the, on your own as mm. you're walking. Mm. As you're walking too. Mm. And you're talking to yourself as you're walking the way I'm talking, I'm talking right now. Yeah. And people around you are seeing yourself. <laughs> they're seeing you talk. <laughs> they're seeing you talk to yeah. yourself. In the like, so they will start wondering, mm. what's wrong with that guy over there? <laughs> No, that's the beauty of being an artist, man. You can do crazy things in town and you'll never be arrested. Mm -hmm. But a normal person, yeah. <laughs> go try do what we do. Because yeah. that's, that's basically the, the process. Because mm. cause I can't imagine you, do you actually sit down like almost like a desk and decide mm. that I'm not moving? Mm. That I'm not moving from here. I'm just writing. I, I, like you're sitting down academically, mm. or is it more like uh, is is it even more expressive even when you're inside the room and you're writing? As in, are you walking around? Are you mm. are you talking to yourself? Mm. <laughs> is, 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 is it hype like a boxing yeah. match? When you read your girlfriend, you can never have those moments. <laughs> 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 oh, I've come to realize that <laughs> uh, a day with your girlfriend can seem like a week in terms of, let's say, if you want to create. <laughs> because each and every day, it will be just a new day, but you can't do your shit. When you're starting, you, you know, it's always about you're not giving me attention. <laughs> each and every day, even if you gave her attention yesterday, it will always be like that the next day. So nowadays, I haven't had that moment of 
of you know sitting and just writing. But it's a matter of you have to be on the road. See, you have to be on the road to be to be doing that. Yeah, you know, when now I'm walking, I have that freedom, mm. that freedom of um, just being there for the moment and then writing them in my head because everywhere I'm going, I'm repeating, I'm repeating what's in my mind. And then if I have a phone, I'll do the recording and then come right again. But I. And the, the spur of the moment. Mm. But also, if it, yeah, even your girlfriend can give you a lot of in, uh, like inspiration for your for your craft. The guy can give you any inspiration to write. Yeah. Frustrated See, your girlfriend. Something. No, not even. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say like writing, writing, writing in terms of anything, because he'll be uh, like she'll be your first critic. When a line doesn't hit home, ah, uh, mm. poeta, you know, get get rid of that line. So hey, I find you guys. I you. find you. But also, you can see to your girlfriend for, um, let's say, if you're working on an album and you're with your girlfriend for a week, they can make you love, like, write a love album. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it can be, it depends on the way you feel about them. You write a love album and you want it to be, your album maybe was to be about culture. Mm -hmm. You'll find yourself like, like writing a love album because each and every time you're looking at her and every moment is making sense and you're just being there in the moment. So now, Andika, this looks like a love thing. And then you're starting another one. Maybe you want to write about democracy. <laughs> <laughs> and with the girlfriend, you look at, an, at her in a very uh, different dimension. You're like, let me write about women. <laughs> so an album can be entirely about, you know, um, love, and women, if you're with a girlfriend. So it's, I advise it's, all it's the artists to find a girlfriend, a good girlfriend. <laughs> 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 They'll write really, really beautiful pieces about their moms, their sisters, mm -hmm. and, and their women in their lives. Yeah, because women need to be appreciated. And the footnote, no, guess foot, the footnote is a good girlfriend, <laughs> not just a girlfriend. A good girlfriend. A good yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. You come to our comment section and say, you guys. <laughs> you tell us to find girlfriends. Yeah, now have girlfriends now what are these problems? Is it Rishida Ghani who let her go? Because, you see, um, why, why am I really emphasizing on the girlfriend's, uh, girlfriend stuff? Um, even girlfriends, they bring the good in us if you find a good girlfriend because there was a point in my, I think 2020, 2021, yeah, I was really in a dark place and I was working on myself and really, really trying to be the man that I'm supposed to be. And that's when I started reading, um, as a man thinketh, the way they become, you know, I was reading books. And also, the way I'm telling you now, being an artist, a girlfriend also came into my life and added a certain portion of virtue to my life. Mm -hmm. you get? So that's how I really knew that I was also now evolving now as a, as a spoken word artist to now being a podcaster. Okay. You get because I, I saw a higher calling through somebody who came into my life. So when you're talking about inspiration, inspiration the Ziko Mingi Sana, you can get it from a person, mm -hmm. a place, a mood, or a feeling. <clears throat> the the idea of being a, like the way you are proposing the idea of being in a in a relationship, like a stable one, a good one, actually better is a healthy one, mm. is that from what I'm seeing from you, you have a very divergent way of working, as in it's almost it's almost chaos in the moment. So mm. you can get on stage, you can do this, you can make something on the spot. Mm. But at home, there is this structure. So it kind of makes you civilized, kind mm. of. You know, that's why you're seeing it's bringing benefits to you. Is that mm. why? Yes, um, because when you see when I'm at home and I'm creating, there was a point I was rehearsing in my room, and actually my sister came out and, you know, started bashing me like, the neighbors are thinking there's a madman in our house because you have to shout and you have to go with the vocal ranges and stuff. Mm. So you see now you have to structure it in a way that I'll be maybe writing in the house and just write, and then okay the second step. I go to a certain forest, let's say Karura or Arboretum, and then rehearse. And then the third step, I come to my house, but I'm not now rehearsing with the uh, volume because the neighbors will be 
going all crazy because of what I'm rehearsing in the loudness. Now you rehearse in front of the mirror without even getting a voice out. So you see that's structured. Yeah. But now when you get on stage, it becomes a different, different kind of um, environment. Now where you want to be spontaneous, but you had a structure. Now when you figure on the stage, it becomes chaos because <laughs> you can't <laughs> do a structured performance mm. at home and you're here where it doesn't need to be structured. Mm. So that's on a patanga. At times you have really rehearsed on your craft. And then when you get on stage, you want to change it because the way the audience are feeling some type of way and you want to go with the direction mm. and then you mess in your performance because what you rehearsed and what you're performing are having conflict. It's 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 almost like it's it's basically freestyle rap. Mm. You see, you read the audience mm. and you determine what you're going to do. Yeah. Or uh football. Mm. You see Football, there are a lot of things those people have to be able to do to be able to play a 90-minute match. Mm. But it's not like every run, they've mm. already decided how it's mm. going to be done. Mm. They, they, In the spur of the moment, it might be the best decision just to settle to the take, ball yeah. with your chest yeah. and move out of the way for uh, somebody to yes. shoot. Mm. So it's not like that move, you rehearsed mm. it. And it's that's the thing. So basically, it's, it's true to say that you must put in a lot of practice into doing that mm. so that you can be able to perform for like half an hour mm. or just freely, mm. isn't it? it? It really requires a lot. And that's why I'm telling you, each and every day, an artist should be practicing. I'm telling you, you'll have confidence where you can change what you are going to perform and it will still work. But if you do, like um, not rehearse a lot and just love your work the way we are saying, mm. having fun with the work, loving your work and appreciating your work. It makes you be a spontaneous person where, you know you can be in a performance. And let me go graphic about this. Mm. There was a point I was performing, but not now as a poet. Mm. I was an actor in the mm. set books. I was doing set books before I started now getting into poetry. Mm. That moment where you're just from high school, fresh from high school in your you know, hustling. Mm. I was, I was, a, I was an actor mm. for a set book, and we had so been so used to rehearsing our lines, rehearsing our moves, and everything. So when mm. you enter stage, you know this is the line you'll say, and this is how you'll, you know, mm. stand. And then there was just a lady from high, in high school. There was a lady um, seated at the front row, and what did she do? She just opened her legs, bro. She opened her legs, and you know, her skirt was here. And you know, as an actor, I panicked. Because I was not used to being um, in the moment and Throwing loving the what I did. So you know when I saw the things, I was like, "Whoa!" And then that's how the lines just, uh, you know, is a capotea. So it was crazy to look at Um, it's like you know, welcome to this world. That's how it happens. You know, somebody will show you their teeth or show you their thighs, and that's the only way you'll forget everything that you had been rehearsing for a while. Mm. So that's why I came to, I think after that moment, I was like, man, I will own my craft. I will just not rehearse it. Mm. I'll rehearse it, own it, and, you know, now when I get on stage, even if something changes, mm. don't go heavy. Mm. I, I'm with it at, when it comes. You're even ready. when somebody yell, like, yells on the other side, I'll mm. be like, I know my craft, so I can give you a minute and still go back to my craft. So it's about owning, loving, and having fun with your work. So, 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 mm. so. I think that's a pl good place to cut it. Yeah. I wish the conversation could have Man. been longer. <laughs> I so wish the conversation could have been longer, but I understand you have mm. other things to do. Yes. So we can set up a... This has to go. Uh, it has to go. It's the second it has to segment, go. man. Kuna lessons two hours. Yeah, there's some lessons you've given us today, and, and mm. I'm sure the people who are listening out there yeah. will, will, will pick up something, because I know I have. Mm. I know I have. And, uh, Poeta, kuna, there's something you'd like to announce to the people, probably kuna kitu come anytime soon. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Or where you. they can mm. find you. Ah. First of all, thank you, Mr. Washira, for having me. These are the Faces of Art podcast podcast, the number one, the number one leading podcast in Kenya right now. So being in this platform is an honor. So I have some couple of stuff that are coming up. I have a masterclass. I have a masterclass. It's called the Creatives Masterclass 2022. It will be happening as the years progress, I think, maybe in the next four months. And I also have an experimental spoken word album coming up. It's called 
Build different. Build different. Build different, yeah. So mm. those are the two things I'm working on right now. As much as I'm working on my podcast, I'm also a podcaster, um, an edited voices podcast. So that's something that also has been ongoing and it's been really great. It's also a podcast that is concentrating on self-development, talent, and business. So we want to see how creatives are also growing in terms of just having the fame, the name, and also being at least people who are living off their art. So Great. these are the things that we're doing right now. Great. Mm. Even the people in the future, probably the people who listen to this podcast yeah. five years to come, mm. they can look back and say, hey, come up and build different <laughs> Liana. This is what build different hey, started. Hey, hey. So, so we, are, we are looking forward to that. Thank you, man. And for all the artists out there, I hope you grab something from that conversation. If you'd like to learn more about Faces of Art, you can go to segwaypictures.com. That's S-E-G-U-E, -E, then pictures segwaypictures.com everything is there if you're an artist give us your email we'll keep you posted on everything we are doing there's more that's coming there's portraiture that's coming out there's the podcast that's coming out and there's a lot of education we're trying to pass on to people and connection collaboration is the name of the game ladies and gentlemen that's why it's it's not just poets who are coming here yeah. all different type of artists are going to up so you hear something you like get in touch with us to organize contact, hook up with that artist, make some magic. Amaniaje? Kabisa, man. Keep the rhythm if you can. Sawa, sawa. Yeah, yes. So till next time, Faces of Art, out.